Lagrange form of the remainder, also called Lagrange error bound or Taylor's theorem remainder. When a Taylor polynomial is used to approximate a function, we need a way to see how accurately the polynomial approximates the function. Now the function is equal to the approximation plus the remainder or plus the error that we have. So if we just manipulate this a little bit, if we just minus the a polynomial approximation, we have the exact value minus the approximation is going to be equal to the remainder. Written in words, function equals the polynomial plus the remainder. So by just subtracting, we have the remainder equals the function minus the polynomial. Taylor's theorem. If a function f is differentiable through order n plus 1 in an interval containing c, then for each x in the interval there exists a number z between x and c such that f of x equals this would be the approximation of the polynomial all the way up to here and then plus the remainder plus what's left over where the remainder r of x or error is given by r of x is equal to this would be the next derivative over uh, the next factorial times x minus c to the n plus 1. This is just the first omitted term. This is Lagrange remainder. Historically, the remainder was not due to Taylor, but to a French mathematician, Joseph Louis Lagrange, 1736 to 1813. For this reason, the remainder is called the Lagrange form of the remainder. Taylor's inequality. Suppose that P of X is the nth degree polynomial approximation for the function F centered at C and M is the maximum value of the N plus 1 derivative on the interval C to B or B to C if B is less than C. Then the error in using the polynomial value uh, P sub N of B is esti uh, to estimate F of B is bounded by the maximum value of the derivative over N plus 1 factorial times the absolute value of b minus c to the n plus 1. Now what about this maximum value? Let's say that your derivative is the sine of x. Now the sine of x is less than or equal to, uh, greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to uh, positive 1. So sine has to be between negative 1 and 1. So we could have a maximum value for sine of x. It could be 1. Example 1, let f be a function with 5 derivatives on the interval 2 to 3 and assume that the 5th derivative is less than 0.2. So here we're given the maximum value it could be and we're even told that it's going to be less than this. For all x in the interval 2 to 3, if a 4th degree Taylor polynomial for f at c equals 3 is used to estimate f of 3, how accurate is this approximation and give 3 decimal places? So the absolute value of the remainder or the error is less than or equal to the absolute value of the maximum value of the fifth derivative which is 0.2 divided by 5 factorial and then times the b is the value where we're evaluating this and we're evaluating this at 3 we're centered at 2 so c is 2 and then we're to the fifth power so this is less than or equal to the absolute value of 0.2 over 5 factorial, because this is just 1 to the 5th, that's times 1. So that's not really going to affect the problem. Let's take 0.2 and divide it by 5 factorial, which is 120, but we'll use the factorial. We have 0 0.002, so it's less than or equal to 0 0.002. Example 2, find the 5th degree Maclaurin polynomial for sine of x. Then use your polynomial to approximate sine of 1. And use Taylor's theorem to find the maximum error for your approximation. Give three decimal places. So find the 5th degree Maclaurin polynomial. Well, sine of x is equal to, uh, we need the odd powers, and uh, but we're centering this at, uh, oh, it's Maclaurin, so we're centering at 0. We have x, uh, I need 5th degree, x minus x to the 3rd over 3 factorial and then plus x to the 5th over 5 factorial. So that's the 5th degree Maclaurin polynomial. Then use your polynomial to approximate sine of 1. 
Uh, so we have 1 minus 1 to the third over 3 factorial plus 1 to the fifth over 5 factorial. 1 minus 1 divided by 3 factorial is 6, and then plus 1 divided by 5 factorial is 120. So I get a value of 0 0.812. So 0 0.81, uh, 842, excuse me, 0 0.842. Find an interval A to B such that A is less than or equal to sine of 1 is less than or equal to B. And, and uh, we didn't finish this. Find the maximum error for your approximation. Uh, so we have negative 1 is less than or equal to sine of x is less than or equal to 1. So the maximum error is going to be 1. m is equal to 1 in this case. So that's letter a. Letter b. Find an interval a to b such that a is less than or equal to sine of 1 is less than or equal to b, and we're supposed to give three decimal places. So the absolute value of the remainder of fifth degree of x is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of the maximum value of the sixth derivative, which is going to be 1 over 6 factorial times, we're evaluating this at 1, so we have 1 minus, and because it's a Maclaurin polynomial, we're centering this at 0, and that's going to be to the sixth power. Now that's 1 to the sixth, that's really not going to affect the answer, so that's less than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over 6 factorial. Let's take 1 divided by 720, that's 6 factorial. Uh, so we have an error less than or equal to 0 0.001. So we're supposed to find the interval. Well, the estimate is 0 0.842, and our error will be less than 0 0.001. So let's add 0 0.001 to this, which is 0 0.843. And if we subtract 0 0.001, we get 0 0.841. Uh, so the interval is 0.841 to 0.843. Could sine of 1 be 0.9? No. Uh, 0.9 is not in uh, the interval of the error. Write the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial for f of x equals e to the x. Then use your polynomial to approximate e, and find the Lagrange error bound for the maximum error when the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 1. Give three decimal places. So we're supposed to write the fourth degree Maclaurin polynomial. So the polynomial of nth degree, or in this case, four, case fourth degree, of x is equal to, we have 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the third over 3 factorial, plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. Use your polynomial to approximate e to the first power. So we want p sub 4 of 1 is equal to, we have 1 plus 1 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 1 divided by 6 plus 1 divided by 24. That's equal to 2.7083. So 2.708. And E, as we know, is 2.718. So that's getting uh, pretty close already. Find an interval A to B such that A is, uh, E is in between A and B. Give three decimal places. So this was letter A. And in letter B, uh, we need the maximum value of, uh, it's going to be the fifth derivative. Well, no matter, you know, all the derivatives are e to the x, e to the x, e to the x, e to the x. It's all e to the x. So the maximum value of this derivative, of the fifth derivative, is just simply e. So the absolute value of the error of fourth degree, of fourth degree, is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of the maximum value of the derivative over, uh, this is 5 factorial, and then times, uh, we're plugging 1 in, and we're centering this around 0. So that's to the fifth power. So that's less than or equal to e over 5 factorial, which, which is less than or equal to, let's see, we have uh, e to the first, and we're going to divide that by 120. 
So the error is less than 0 0.023. And this is our estimate right here. So we need 2.708 minus 0 0.023. And we get 2.685. So 2.685. And then we're going to take the estimate and add on 0 0.023. Uh, we have 2.708, and we're going to add on 0 0.023, and we get 2.731, 2.731. The function f has derivatives of all orders for all real numbers x. Assume that, well, all of these values exist. Write the third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2 and use it to approximate f of 2.3, Give three decimal places. So letter A, give the third degree Taylor polynomial. So the polynomial of third degree of X is equal to, we have six plus uh, four times X minus two. Then we have minus seven times X minus two squared over two factorial. And then we have plus eight times X minus two to the third and that's over 3 factorial. Now we're supposed to use this to estimate f of 2.3. We have 6 plus 4 times 0.3 when we subtract, and then minus 7 times uh, 0.3 squared, but then divided by 2, which is 2 factorial. I think I want seven times, not my, not divide, seven times, uh, 0.3 squared and then divide by two, then plus eight times 0.3 to the third, and then that divide that by six. So the estimate is 6.921, 6 6.921. See what letter B has to say. The fourth derivative of F satisfies the inequality the fourth derivative of x is less than or not less than nine, so that's the m. That's the maximum value of the fourth derivative. For all x in the closed interval two to two point three, use the Lagrange error bound on the approximation of f of two point three found in part a to find the interval a to b such that a or f of two point three is in between a and b. Give three decimal places. Uh, so the absolute value of the remainder of third degree is less than or equal to the absolute value of the maximum value of the fourth derivative, which is said to be nine over, uh, not five, but four factorial times, we're evaluating this at 2.3. So 2.3, whoops, I don't want that parenthesis. 2.3 and then minus, we're centering this at two. And that's gonna be to the fourth power which is less than or equal to, let's find out. We have nine divided by four factorial, which is 24. Then we're gonna multiply that times, we have 0.3 raised to the fourth power. So the error is less than or equal to 0 0.003. Now if we take 6.921 and we minus 0 0.003, we get 6.918, so 6.918, and we're going to uh, 6.924. Could f of 2.3 equal 6.922? Show why or why not? And on letter C, it could be, uh, because 6.922 is between 6.918 and 6.924.